Hey there, and welcome. I'm going to be working on this neat, but in need of some love, Ethan Allen cabinet. It's cube shaped, so I'm going to call it a cubinet. I found this cubinet at the thrift store for a whopping $20. It has porcelain googly eyed handles, which I kind of like, but who doesn't like some googly eyes? The slatted cabinet doors have wood backing on them. There are quite a few deep and possibly intentional scratches on the cabinet. It could just be that someone used old English on them, but there's definitely distressing on this piece. Inside the cabinet, it's a solid pine shelf, but it's missing the backer board entirely. The magnetic clasps work great, and the doors open and close without any issue. I'm not going to use a TSP cleaner on this cabinet before I start. I'm just going to wipe it down and remove all of the hardware. The cabinet hinges are these really neat looking L-shaped brackets. As I'm taking them off, I'm making sure that I put them in a specific order. That way I don't have possible issues putting them back into the doors. With older furniture, things like metal hinges can warp over time, and trying to get them to fit back into the cabinet doors as they were before, it's just much easier if they're put back in their original location. With the metal clasps, I'm just going to remove them and then attach their smaller screws to their respective magnets. I used my Milwaukee ratcheting multi-tool to remove all the screws. I stay away from using a drill so that I don't potentially strip out the screws. Next up, I'm going to strip the finish off of the cubinet. I'm a big proponent of using citrus strip. It's a milder stripper, but it can take longer to remove finishes. When I apply it to the surface, I use a chip brush that I store in a plastic baggie for reuse to spread the snot-like consistency around. I'm going to leave this stuff on overnight, so I grab some plastic bags to stop the citrus strip from drying out. When I'm ready to remove the citrus strip, I come back and I first obviously remove the plastic bags. And then I carefully scrape the excess off with my scraper since it's a metal scraper. I wanna make sure that I'm not going to scrape the soft pine surface. Uh, and I scrape the goop into a bucket. An empty paint can will also work. After I remove the bulk of the material, I use a fine steel wool pad and mineral spirits to remove the left leftover stripper. I repeat the same process for side two. Normally this would work really well for me. Um, the finish on this cube knit was really thick though. Because the finish was really thick, I ended up pulling out the big guns, i.e. quick strip, um, the 15 minute version, which is the only version you should ever buy. This stuff smells really strong and I recommend only using it in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside, or if you're in your garage, open your garage door. I opened mine after I applied it, just a heads up. Um, it's a gel form, and I use a different chip brush, a new one, to smear it on the surface, just like I would with Citrus Strip. I used a heavy amount so that within the 15 minute window, it wouldn't dry out. Same process here as with the sister strip. Scrape the globs of the stripper into a bucket, and then I use mineral spirits and fine steel wool to deactivate and remove the rest of the stripper. This worked quite a bit better, and I repeated this same process for all four of the cubinet faces. Ah uh, yes, the doors. The slatted, uncooperating, doors. 
I really wanted to use wood stain on the slatted doors, so I used quick strip on them. Do you remember me pointing out the doors had a wooden backer on them? Well, that worked against my plan. When I came back to remove and deactivate the stripper, my plan was to mostly use the steel wool to remove the stripper, which is what I normally would do on things like furniture legs. The problem with that is the stripper had gone between the slats and become stuck behind them. And the stripper barely touched the finish on the slats. I wiped them down three times with mineral spirits and flushed them out with my hose. Yes, my hose after I'd used mineral spirits. And then I set them aside. Sometimes you just need to walk away from certain areas of slat serration. In an effort to remain productive with this project, I went over and sanded down the rest of the finish on the cube in its body using my Makita Orbital Sander and 120 grit sandpaper. After all of the sanding was done on the body, I came back to the doors again. Not really sure what to do with them at this point. My original idea was thrown out the cubinet door, but may as well try to sand the body doors anyways. After the outer perimeter of the door was sanded down, I tried to use my padded sanding attachment. This did not work and I almost wrecked one of the slats. Uh, hand sanding was what I tried next and that was near impossible due to the inset details. I could have sanded them down, yes, but it would have legitimately taken hours, possibly days. And at this point, I gave up on my hopes and dreams. Kidding, we don't give up, we improvise. I cleaned up the sanding dust off the doors and I got back to work. I've been noticing that whitewashing is this new hip trend. I generally don't like to paint things white, but the whitewash finish still shows grain pattern on the wood, which I am a huge fan of. So what I ended up doing was I got some general finishes white gel stain and I applied that to the external body of the cubinet. I applied it using a painter's cloth and gloves using a swirling motion, think of waxing a car, and made sure that the stain was able to coat the entire surface. I came back and wiped the surface off with the direction of the grain. After letting the gel stain sit on the wood for about five minutes, it's hot in my garage and stain sets up really quickly, so I only let it sit for five minutes at the most. I loved the way the gel stain worked. It looked great with all the knots on the pine. It just was so good, just so good. On to the inside of the cabinet. I wanted to paint the inside of the cabinet, but before I do that, I'm going to prime the surface. Pine is notoriously bad for wood bleeds where the wood oils or the tannins leach in through paint, but it doesn't happen initially usually when you paint. It's when you're done painting and then you apply the finish and then bam, it looks really bad. So I pulled out my roller and applied primer because it's faster. Also tin foil in the tray is life changing. So use some tin foil, trust me. I did make an attempt to apply primer to the slats as well using the foam roller, but that didn't work really well. And I ended up busting out the tape and I taped down all of the outside perimeter of the slats. I then used an aerosol primer to further coat the slats with a healthy dose of primer. I did not want wood bleeds and with all the different details, an aerosol made sense. I left the tape on the doors so that I could go back in with my Dixie Belle driftwood paint, which is the color of the slats, and 
applied two and a half coats of paint to the slats, making sure that my brush was moistened with my mister throughout the process. I chose driftwood because it was one of the most complimentary colors that I had that wasn't a bright white. It would have been too much, but it looked really good with the white gel stain. So if you're looking for some color to complement it, look for like a uh, khaki color or like a light brown color. It looked really nice together. I also applied two and a half coats of driftwood paint to the bottom of the inside shelf for the cabinet and the inside of the cabinet itself. Um, the top of the shelf was gel stained in white as well. The backer board also needed to be painted. I wanted a cohesive look and the raw wood didn't really go with the quote unquote theme. I also didn't want to use the same driftwood color because it would be too much of the same thing. I wanted to give it a little bit of contrast and depth. So instead I used DIY paint in linen white on the backer board. I wanted to add a textured appearance and I wanted it to feel more like canvas than I did wood. So I applied two coats of the paint, pointing out an important fact that I applied it to raw wood. Make a mental note of this, you'll see why later. To seal the cubinet, I wanted to use semi-gloss. There was a high gloss finish on it previously and I kind of wanted to keep that theme. I had some Verithane Ultimate Polyurethane and Semi-Gloss in a can and miraculously I was able to get Semi-Gloss in an aerosol too. My stores have been sold out of aerosol water-based polyurethane for over a month which is kind of weird but we'll just be happy that we found them. I applied my first coat of polyurethane using my two inch brush. To reduce brush strokes, I made sure my brush is damp and I use long brush strokes in the same direction. I did this for all of the surfaces of the cubinet. Keep in mind that I stopped midway while applying finish to the backer board. The reason that I'd stopped applying polyurethane to the backer board was I saw the bleed through happening as I was applying it. So. Um, I ended up stopping and for the sake of time and the fact that I didn't want to waste another roller, I ended up grabbing the aerosol primer to prime the backer board. After it dried, I recoated it and then applied another coat of polyurethane to it. Finishing off sealing the cubinet, I used the rest of my aerosol semi-gloss can really makes me want a paint sprayer because it's less sanding between coats with the aerosol. Uh, keep your eyes open for the occasional poly run though because they still do happen even when spraying. After the body of the cabinet had dried, I flipped it onto its top so that I could easily access the bottom. I needed to remove those furniture sliders on the bottom. And to do that, I used a flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and I did have to bring out my chisel, but all of those were pried out. I want to add a bit of a warning about these furniture sliders. Make sure that you're properly storing them or disposing of them. Don't set them on your floor. They don't feel good to step on. Legs! I bought some of these mid-century modern metal legs from Amazon. They have four screws per leg. It's best to pre-drill holes when attaching them. And to mark the spots for pre-drilling, I used a punch and a hammer to tap an indent into the wood. Pre-drilling prevents the wood from splitting and it's going to help your screws go in a lot easier. On the back legs, I'm only able to have three screws in both legs, which will be fine, so I only tap in three punches and pre-drill three times. Also note that I put the legs with each corner as I move around the base. I did this because there may be inconsistencies between the legs. This alleviates any possibility 
that I pre-drill the holes and then the screw holes don't align. On my drill, I switched over to my Phillips head attachment and drill in all the screws, making sure the legs are properly aligned with the cubinet base when I'm screwing it in. I could have removed the base entirely, but it gave the cubinet some extra height and I didn't have to use taller legs. Before I put the backer board on, I wanna make sure that I put the shelf inside. I had to drill out the holes for the little, I don't know what you wanna call those, the little shelf holders. We'll call them shelf holders, sure, that sounds right. They had some paint in them, so I just took my drill and drilled inside of them and cleared those out. You could also use a small screwdriver to do the same thing. The idea in putting the shelf in first is that it helps me stabilize the backer board while I'm trying to attach it, and it's easier to put in with the backer board out. To attach the backer board, I used a hammer and some wire nails. That's just what I had. Staples could also be used as well. Next up, I reattach the magnetic clasps to the inside of the cubinet. The doors were a bit more tricky. I attached the L hinges back to the cabinet doors, but aligning the doors to the body of the cubinet took a bit of ingenuity. I used my drill and my ratcheting screwdriver and got the job done. Oh, hey, look at the time. Looks like it's, uh, it's finally time to show you the big reveal. While I did not initially want to paint the slats, if I could go back in time, I would have applied paintable caulk in between each of the slats and went directly to painting. Using stripper when I could, couldn't get back to the back of the slats was not my brightest move, but hopefully you found it somewhat entertaining. P.S. If you could boop that like button, you'd be pretty awesome. You're still awesome if you don't. But, you know what I'm saying. And if you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching.